Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that we started repairing an HP 5245L Nixie counter from 1963. Equipped with its various plugins, it counts up to 18 GHz. And amazingly, it does that using transistors only, as there is not a single IC in sight. It was the king of counters in the 1960s, and many of them were used in the Apollo tracking stations. But our donated unit does not work, it does not count and shows signs of previous unsuccessful repairs all over it. In episode 1, we retune our x10 multiplier which was way off, found a faulty transistor in the 10 MHz distribution board and replaced another critical transistor that had been previously changed to the wrong type. We verified that the frequency input signal now made it up all the way to the gate that precedes the counter stages. Sadly, it still did not count. It appears that we are missing the signal to open the gate. So fixing that signal is our next step. So I'm continuing my match chase for signals. Uh, I did not get a gating signal that comes from A22. And A22 is over here. And I could confirm that's the gate flip flop. And that's this little card over here, which I have pulled out. You. Uh, and I could not get any signal out of that thing, so I come back to the beginning, and uh, it comes from 21. So I'm back on the board here, and um, so the input comes from over here, and then goes back to the A22 and comes over here. So I'm back on the board that I where I just changed the transistors. And I'm following the signal, uh, and this one is the signals we just repaired, so that, that's from that board over here, so that works now. Uh, so I get it here, but then I get nothing at the output. Uh, so here's the input, here's the output. So something is happening either with that transistor or with that transistor. So I took my two transistors off the gate circuit and they were here and there is not one to save the other. So the one on the left is an open and the one on the right is a short. <laughs> so I, I don't know what happened to the card, might be over voltage or something. So by the way those are 2708s, uh, so they are a higher voltage version of the of the 709. So a, a 2N22 22 will do. All right, two new transistors in my board here. Now on the gating section, will I have recovered the gating signal? Or is it another red herring? Oh yes. Okay. Oh, much better. A gating signal. Do we have any counting? No. We count. Oh, well, something is happening here. Kind of. Um, let me receive the gate because uh, my gate card is still flying here. Okay, so I did receive the gate. which makes it work much more reliably. Okay, so we have recovered a gate, but we are still not counting. All right, so, progress. Okay, so now we have the correct signal coming out of here. We have a gate trigger that goes to A22, should come back here and give me a trigger signal. And I still have Zippo. Oh, no, no, I saw it, it's, it's here, it's here. It's getting there. I think I see it. Scope, you should work. There you go. Aha! Uh -huh. So we recover our trigger pulse. Yeah, so our gate is working correctly, but I am still not counting. Okay, so now I think I have a gating signal, so I reprobe myself to see the input signal the pulses after the differentiator we now have the gate and then I hook myself lastly here to see if the gate is selecting the pulses we have a good 
input signal which we should be able to count these are my little pulses from the differentiator this is the gate we just repaired and at the output do we gate the pulses? we do! over here I do have pulses you can see the pulses are coming here and I'm getting them so I should be able to count that but I'm not actually I'm not even resetting correctly okay then it goes to A17 which is we are getting into the counting finally and we are good getting flip-flops this is flip-flop A, flip-flop B flip-flop D, flip-flop C, oh it's weird because they do BCD counting oh yes so these circuits are just to do decimal counting so it resets the right way it's an IC but in discrete form okay so now we are getting to the logic part of things and A17 is this fellow beautiful board so interestingly I was looking at the board and there already been some work uh, a transistor has been replaced some other work over here so this board has had work on it before not the first one in it so we're going to put it on an extender and see if it counts okay so i'm now connected on my first flip flop and it appears that it's neither flipping nor flopping and these are the input pulses now they are good and I see nothing on the output, just little stray pulses, but it should go up and down. Looks like our first flop flop is not working. Oh, they are made with two N seven O nines. Let's let's test the transistors first. All right, pair of flop flop transistors. Left one is a good transistor, not much gain, but good transistor right one is dead okay so that's why it was not flipping or flopping um the left one is the one that was replaced the right one was the original uh, anyhow i have to replace them in pairs because the flip flop so we'll put two um, pn 2222s okay two new transistors on our first flip flop we are coming up on six transistor replaced four were dead one was the wrong type and another one we replace as a companion to the one that was dead in the flip-flop are we going to be lucky enough and get some flip and flopping action and counting and nope nope well that's weird flat lines here despite having changed the transistor now that's bizarre Okay, let me poke around. So it's now in the circuits, not very far. Okay, I finally got it to flip and flop. I looked at the circuit and noticed it was super highly optimized. It has little L's and little C's and it's working with very narrow margins. So I thought mm, maybe it's a, it will only work for the original transistors. And so I put some 709s that I had around and uh, from the other part of the machine and even doing that that still didn't flip and flop but i so maybe looking at it is enough to upset it and sure enough if i'm not looking at it it starts to flip and flop and it counts but not very far it counts on a few stages you can see it here and then it gets stuck over here so we have other issues further up the chain. Aha! Uh -huh, this is our first really tricky repair. One of the flip-flop transistors was dead, that's for sure. But replacing the transistor pair with modern, better transistors did not help. You see, a flip-flop is a notoriously difficult circuit to optimize, particularly a toggle or T flip-flop, as this one is known. It must be stable enough to have two states, 
yet it must be unstable enough so a very tiny pulse can flip it from one state to the other. And this first flip-flop is the fastest one in the whole machine, running at 50 MHz. I could see it had a whole bunch of extra peaking inductors and capacitors to optimize it. What the HP designers had to do is to bring it to the very edge of stability so it would flip at the smallest provocation and very fast. When I put my pair of modern, stronger transistors, the circuit became too stable again and it did not work. Fortunately, I had an extra 2N709 left over from the wrongly replaced one in the previous episode, so I used that one instead. And yet, that still did not work, because it is so optimized that just having my scope probe on the base of the transistor was enough to upset the delicate balance. But it worked when I removed that probe. By the way, I checked putting 2N2222s without the probes did not work either, so it really requires the original transistors. We could of course make it work with modern transistors, but that would require re-engineering the entire circuit. Now let's count slowly, see what happens. So I check, it doesn't work with uh, 2N2222s, so it really needs the original transistors. Uh, unless I want to modify the circuit and uh, but that must be the most finicky of all of them I think uh, the, the other flip-flops they are not that optimized they don't have little caps anywhere they, they are just standard so if you look at the next one that's not working that's just a completely normal flip-flop so it might be easier so the first counter is special because it has the optimized flip-flops this is counting this is displaying the second one has the counting and the display on the same board so we are either the flip-flop is not working right or the decoding into the Nixie is not working right so we have the flip-flops that count to 10 and then the flip-flops light up little neon bulbs and the little neon bulbs um, go through a, a decoder treatment it's made with a whole bunch of photoresistors <laughs> so that's a, how to make a BCD into 1 to 10 decoder without an IC just neon bulbs and little photoresistors in the schematics the helpful HP engineers even give an example of how the digit 0 is decoded Zero is of course when all the flip-flops are at zero and the left neon of each stage is on. Note that the active neons all have a little black square marking on the schematic, showing that they should be on. Then there is a little cheat sheet on the side that tells you which neon shines into which photoresistor. In the case of digit zero, flip-flop stages A, B and C illuminate photoresistor H, P and S. Stage D doesn't even matter. And going back to the schematics, we see that photoresistors HP and S have indeed a little square mark next to them. They will be illuminated by the neons and therefore conducting. This will connect the Nixie pin 0 to minus 130 volts and the number 0 will illuminate. Magical! You just have made a whole decoder out of neons and resistors and didn't even have to use a logic IC, much less a single high voltage transistor. Uh, but it could be that some of the neon bulbs are dead, or it could be that we're not counting. Well, it looks like we have both issues because it's counting, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's seven. So it's counting to something, but then it's never passing it to the next one. So probably both issues. We get to look at one of the Nixie counters. Woohoo! So you have the Nixie at the front, and I suppose here as where all the neons are, uh, which actually might give us a nice visual clue of um, how the counter is working. It should, right? We should <laughs> it should light up a neon and an anti-neon for every flip-flop in here so maybe we'll learn something so so the neon do they do two functions they are 
used for the decoding, the BCD to Nixie decoding, and they are also used for memory. And ooh, they are underneath. We won't see a thing. Oh, disappointing. Ha, ah, I think I can disassemble it. I took the two screws in front of here. And I think this board has all the photoresistors. And so if I take this and this out, I should see a whole row of neon tubes. Hopefully. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. If I lift that up. We have beautiful neon balls. Two per flip flop, flip in the flop. So one uh, bit and the negative of the bit. And it goes straight into a photoresistor array. There we go. Who needs a logic analyzer when you can do a visual debug with neon bulbs? So if my interpretation is correct, we should do a visual debug and I should tell us if it's counting correctly or not. And if the fault is in the decoder or not. Okay, so the first two flip-flops are doing fine. Oh, but it's one, two, two, four. So this is not regular BCD, it's not one, two, four, eight. It's one, two, two, four. Reset, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this, this is more complicated. They are not in a uh, one, two, three, four order. Okay, I have to figure out the bit order here. So after studying the hieroglyphics, um, the flops, flip flops are in order A, B, D, C. And I think it's the uh, D that's not working. The third one is not even resetting in the correct position. So if I go here this one should be uh, inverted here so it's the third pair uh, that's not uh, that has one of the transistor that's bad or one of the diode that's bad that's my guess transistor check for the flip-flop PNP this time this one's good this one is good too so so much for my theory here. They're both good. Okay, it's because I didn't read the, hierogly the hieroglyphics correctly. The lamps that don't work are DS2A, DS2B, and it's this stage is Q3 and Q4, and I changed these ones. So not these, these over here. Okay, PNT flip-flop transistors round two. It works. Ooh. It works, but barely. It's one as double or more the gain of the other one. So fortunately, those are transistors that I have. A 30 volt, 400 megahertz low VSAT. It took a switching transistor that could withstand the higher voltage. Let's see if we can match one better. Okay, that's a better match. Okay, did we fix it? No, it's worse. No, it only counts from the first one. The second one doesn't do anything. What? What the? Aha, now we got some action. That took me a while. Uh, but if you notice, there are some resistors are lifted here and there, like all the 18Ks. Can point to them, and those are all the resistors tied to the reset. So I was, I thought I was losing my marbles that the transistors and the diodes were good, and this wouldn't do anything. And then I noticed by probing around that 
the base of each transistor that wasn't flipping was tied to something and it shouldn't. And even on the one that worked, it wasn't symmetric. So then I say, aha, what else is not symmetric? Well, it has the reset. So there's a reset wire here, it's connected and that's an asymmetry between the, the two sides of the stages. Uh, so I think something is wrong with the level of my reset. Here is another annoying fold for you. It appeared as if some flip-flops were not working while others did, making me suspect some transistors, but the culprit was actually a reset line at an intermediate level. I had to disconnect some circuitry to isolate the root cause of that silly bug and make my flip-flops temporarily work with the reset function disabled. So let's see if the decoding works. I, th I think it will. This is so well done that they, they, they were able to invent that way of depositing the photoresist on a hybrid circuit. And that's quite a technology. Very clever. Let me restart all this. Okay, so I have uh, mounted my module back together and I, my expectation is that it will can correctly. It does, okay. Did it propagate it? Well, I guess this one has the same reset problem, right? Yeah, so it's, it's doing something weird because my, my reset circuit must be at an intermediate level and then some flip-flops still flip, but they are mostly stuck. And so I need to fix the reset uh, and see if that will fix my counting. So the reset yanks us off to another part of the circuit board 23. Uh, but I know some of it works because that's the sampling circuit. And that's, that's the sample rate here. And now that my gate is working, I put it in there you go I can make it long or I can make it short so it tells me this whole thing is working I suppose I'm going to lose it somewhere in here so the sample board is one we haven't taken up before it's a beauty some rework on that one also. They have all been reworked to some extent. Interesting. So I'm here to see if I have a reset pulse coming here, then probe here before the transistor and probe here after a transistor. So I have the pulse coming out of the multivibrator. I have the reset pulse generated by the first transistor. And I have Zippo nothing coming out of the last transistor, which is the reset amplifier. So maybe yet another busted transistor. And guess what? Our reset transistor is a beautiful transistor. So it's not a reset amplifier. It's what it's something connected to the reset line is shorting it, which is going to be the hell of an issue because it goes everywhere. So I disconnected the reset wire from the back plane and my reset pulse came back then I reconnected the wires expecting it to go away but it didn't uh, so except that one that's not connected to reset I'm only putting 100 kilohertz so that seems to be good uh, if I count it's counting ah did I repair it finally? It's right, one megahertz. Go to one megahertz. Ta-da! One megahertz. Um, so ignore this one because I haven't reconnected the uh, reset to it. Ten megahertz. Ten megahertz. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a longer time to uh, to count, but that's correct. And then if we turn the memory off, we should count up to 10. Why well, it works and it's pretty, pretty well calibrated. So let me reconnect the reset to this. And 
maybe we we can claim partial victory gee wee okay i have reconnected my reset over here and my it's it's in very very close calibration so i, I bet you someone did all the rest of the calibration fire supply was spot on the oven oscillator is spot on and then um, somehow there was eight or nine failures in the rest of the machine <laughs> excellent i think we repaired uh, the main parts now we have to repair the, the 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 part that i wanted to repair in the first place which is the the one that allows you to go to the gigahertz range this this goes as far as 50 megahertz i think we could try it here it goes 50 megahertz no problem, huh? Excellent. 49, eight something. Perfect. So in the end, what, what was it? Well, lots of bad transistors. I don't know why. So we have six bad ones. Totally dead. Two that I changed because one I had uh, to match them and the other one I thought was low gain but I think it would have worked because it was the reset in the end in the flop flop. And then some reset problem that I cannot explain uh, but that had to do with me disconnecting the reset wires that are right here. And then reconnecting them so maybe they were shor shorting somewhere i don't know but it r repaired uh, when i put them back where they were the fault went away so i'll just uh, tie everything back uh, put the screws where they belong and uh, give it a little calibration and then uh, maybe in the next video we'll do the the 12 gigahertz plug-in see you then